welcome to the final Arclight demo. And in this, we are going to be uh, showing the all the progress we made during the work cycle. Um, and so uh, this demo application that you're seeing is available online. Um, everything that you see is being done live and is testable yourself. Um, I would ask that you not test this if you're sitting in front of a laptop while you're while I'm doing the demo, but encourage you to do so afterwards. Um, uh, but that's at arclight-demo.projectblacklight.org. So what you see here is uh, when you start, uh, when you land on the ArcLight uh, homepage, and so uh, you you see a number of things to start, which includes a search box, um, a link that says repositories, and a link that says collections. So to start with repositories, um, if you click on that, you will get a list of repositories that that are configured for the application. So this is one of the features that's based on a, a configuration file. So we have a, a fairly simple configuration file that allows us to say, identify the name of the repository, um, some contact information, a brief description, and, and so forth. So in this case, um, uh, and also a link to some sort of thumbnail image, which could be a building, it could be a sample image from collections, or, or so forth. Uh, the repositories um, also allow us to tie uh, the indexing of EAD directly back to that repository, so um, uh, which you'll see in a little bit more detail. Um, but for example, if you were to click any of these links up here or this view more link over here, you would get a list of collections that have been indexed into this instance of ArcLight. So for Hoover ins institutions, you see the summary page, which lists, I believe, just the first 10 collections. Um, and then you can also then go into view all of our collections, which just provides what you would sort of think of as the normal sort of search results re review uh, uh, view of all the collections for that repository. But again, here you can see that the same card with the repository information, when you've when you've effectively filtered by repository, appears up at the top. So, if I were to go back to the home page and click on collections, uh, what you will see are all the collections that are indexed in this instance of ArcLight. So again, um, rather than seeing, since this is not sort of pre-selected to a given repository, you'll, you'll, you won't see this card up at the top. But this lists all of the collections that are, that are currently indexed. Um, so, and it currently defaults to uh, 10 results per page. So if I were to go back to the home page again and start a search, um, I'm going to start searching for photograph. And one of the first things you can see here is that we've built in some autocomplete functionality. So if we search for just photographs, uh, we will then get a search result for everything that matches photographs. Or, um, you can also see that uh, we've got uh, uh, some basic hit highlighting here. So photograph, this is not a particularly interesting example of that because you're just match essentially matching on titles. But if I were to try something else like history, um, we might see some, some other examples. Uh, again, it looks like we're matching on title, but let's see here. Michigan. Yeah, so so this is an example of, again, a, a mixture of uh, notes and uh, uh, notes and titles and things like that. So um, I think we've configured it to, at, by default, to match the, the first three hits within the context of a, a collection or a component, but that, that would be configurable. Um, so uh, 
so basically here what I'm demonstrating is a keyword search. Um, we also provide an option for fielded search. So if you select this drop down, um, you, uh, if you have a, uh, the index and configured correctly, you can then specify, I want to search for um, uh, a, a matching name. So, uh, so in this case, we can see that that when we search for Friedman in the name field, uh, we just get this uh, record for the Milton Friedman papers at the Hoover. Um, and starting over again. Uh, so this is sort of uh, essentially a blank search and what you would see if you entered in a, a totally blank query into that search box. Um, you can see on the left that we have a number of different facets. So uh, up here at the top, we have a collection facet. So if you wanted to say search for um, search for the keyword Michigan, you can then filter by collection and identify, you know, I, I just want to look for things in the Stanford News Service audiovisual recordings. We can do that. Uh, in addition, um, uh, we have facets by creator. Um, so these are include personal names, corporate names, and family names. Uh, we have a facet by date range, which allows you to sort of say, uh, you know, I'm only interested with something with a creation date in a particular uh, of a particular range. Uh, you can facet by the level um, of description if that's specified in the finding aid. Uh, names, I think, is an important. Uh, the difference between names and creator is important because names allows you to also filter by things, by names which are matched uh, essentially in, in like a controlled access field. So if when you have a name as a subject. But we added a separate creator facet in case people are looking for things that are specifically identified by creator. This is a long, very long name facet. So uh, you can filter by repository, again, which is the department or institution. You can filter by place, uh, by subject. And then, um, in addition, we added this online access facet. And uh, this online access facet uh, basically allows us to, allows you to fil filter results by anything which has a digital object uh, associated with it. Uh, in addition, so uh, you can sort by, sort results by creator, uh, date, and title. So, And uh, as I said before, you can also paginate these results. Uh, in addition, uh, we also introduced a compact view. So one of the, one of the early pieces of feedback that we got was that some of these uh, presentation of search results is actually rather long. Mm -hmm. And so if you click this button, you get this much abbreviated view. So if you want to, you know, you're, you don't need to necessarily have all the notes pulled into the context of the search result. You can then, you have a, a list of results which you can skim much more easily. Uh, in addition, uh, this is sort of a, a, an expansion of this date, date range facet it, is we've also included this, uh, just sort of a larger version of that same visualization. Um, currently, this does not behave as a as the same sort of facet filter, but this sort of allow, allowed us to provide a expanded view of that that date distribution histogram. Uh, let's look at a specific example of uh, of a collection. So, um, so this is the Abdeen Jabara papers at the Bentley Historical Library at Michigan. Um, so. What you first see when you land on uh, a collection detail page is this overview section. So this is uh, essentially the, the same type of information that you would see at the beginning of the finding aid. So information about creator, um, abstract, uh, extent, uh, language, prefer and preferred citation. 
In addition, uh, we provide uh, information on access restrictions both here in this section as well as in this terms and condition accordion on, on the left here. Uh, background includes things like scope and content information, biographical historical note, and information on acquisition. Uh, any controlled access terms that appear at the collection level are also provided here. So if you, uh, if you were to see any here, you would, you would then see that uh, you could start a new query based on those links here. So. Uh, also, in terms of search, you're able to, from the collection overview page, you're also able to do a search within the collection. So you could uh, search for a, a keyword. So in this case, we're searching for FBI within this collection, and then you find all matching results for that. Uh, there's also a, a, a view of the inventory, which is we're calling this contents view. So by default, um, it only uh, displays the immediate children of the collection level description, and each of these are expandable. So, uh, and also we'll see for, for something like a, a series with a scope and content note, you'll see this uh, abbreviated version, and we, if you click view more, then you see the, the see the full version of that. If we were to look at a specific uh, component, we can expand the results and then see, uh, essentially see each of the higher levels of hierarchy here. And these are all, and part of the reason why uh, at this at this point we we're not loading everything at once is for the sake of performance, um, especially with some of the, the larger finding aids. Uh, we're loading the, it, it allows us to sort of improve the performance if, as when we're able to load these in dynamically okay, in the browser. We do know that there's a an interest and requirement for essentially a full view or, or a printable view, um, and it's something that we'd like to work on in a future work cycle. Uh, in addition, we also have the ability, um, if you'd like, to define um, the ability to add downloads uh, for the, the finding aids. So in this case, you can download uh, the, the EAD. Um, but we would say, like, if you have uh, an EAD finding aid or a PDF finding aid, uh, you can configure that and then allow somebody to download it if, if, if you prefer. Okay, so uh, let's look at an example of a specific component as if you were going to land on it um, from a search result. So let's start a new search for uh, for Friedman. So. Uh, as you can see in the search results, um, all of these, are, so what you're seeing here are uh, both collection level descriptions and component level descriptions which match that, that item. And if you were to click through, uh, you will then see that you're on a, page, on a page for a particular component. So in this view, we provide some additional information about uh, about the containers uh, and any other descriptive information that might appear at that level. So I'm going to try another component. Um, and so here you can see that uh, this component um, has, or the series level description, or the series level description has a scope and content note associated with it. Um, in addition, uh, on this uh, component level view, we provide a, uh, the collection context, so both information and a link back to the collection level description itself, as well as where it appears in the hierarchy. So if I go back to that previous example, um, what you'll see is uh, you have a full view both here at the top through this breadcrumb navigation, as well as uh, 
at this sort of uh, nested hierarchical view of where you where that particular component is in the collection. In addition, down here, what you see is you have some degree of context both for the immediate, immediately preceding and immediately following component within that particular uh, parent level of, of description. So again, you can also then click through to any of these individual component levels and then see that component level in, uh, in context as well. Uh, if I were to go back to um, a search for uh, the Abdeen Jabara papers, uh, one of the things that we have been able to implement is uh, some inheritance behavior around terms of, uh, around restriction information. So in this case, um, we have uh, a specific information. So this uh, this specific component, um, either itself or one of its parents, has this information that it's it's restricted. This terms of access information is provided from the collection level. So if we were to go back to the the uh, a a higher level, we'll go to litigation and court cases. We'll, we can see terms and condition. Uh, we see slightly different information. And if we go to the collection level, um, we see uh, the collection level restriction information here. In addition, um, one of the things that we've been able to do is uh, some integration around uh, uh, digital objects. So there are a number of different scenarios in terms of which you might be, how you'd be presenting digital objects through ArcLight. So um, if we were to go back to the Milton Friedman papers, uh, we will see, one of the things you can see in this tab uh, at the collection level is this online, online content link. Um, and this provides a view of all of the components that have, it, if there are no collection level digital objects, this allows us to, to at least show you an abbreviated view of everything in the collection which has a digital object associated with it. If I were to click through to one of these components, um, uh, let's see here, do this one. Um, if ArcLight doesn't know what to do with a link, uh, it will at least provide a link to, to that digital object. So uh, the part of the reason why I'm showing this is this is something that we were able to fix in the last like 24 hours, and uh, I'm very happy to be able to show Sarah this <laughs> in our final demo. So, um, so this is an example, and then you just get a link out to this, uh, this external digital collection site. If we were to go to a different collection and say this one, um, we would see that this, this collection has a collection level digital object, so you don't see that same uh, set of search, uh, search results essentially for, so if you were to click this, you would just get a, a, a PowerPoint, a link to a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so uh, it's you know it's great that we can link out to digital objects, but one of the things that's that's really exciting is at least for for content here at Stanford uh, that's hosted in SDR, we also provide something called Sewell Embed. So Sewell Embed is an implementation of a, a web service called OEmbed that allows us to provide structured information about a digital object viewer. So um, one of the things that we can do then is for any object that has a pearl uh, and we have the ability to at least pull in some degree of viewer that you would, the same viewer that you would see on pearl.stanford.edu. So for example, uh, one of the things that we can do is go to, um, go to the Hannah House collection and go to online content and select this one. And so again, we're on a particular component view. We can see the collection context again. And if we, were, if we click on online content, we then see the embedded viewer. Um, and, uh, and so this is being provided through, uh, through our, our Stanford embed service. And so we have this nice full 
consumable image experience, which doesn't translate quite as nicely on screen sharing, but um, this is this is pulling from Sewell Embed Live. Uh, so this is just an example of a, a single image. Um, so in addition, we have the ability to uh, for uh, multiple for uh, digital objects with multiple images. We have um, So again, we get this embedded viewer, which is um, then provides us with multiple images. Again, the same experience with, with, with zooming. So uh, in addition, um, we are able to, uh, through Sewell Embed, using the KZ, KZSU Project South interviews, If we click online contacts, uh, we then can then uh, present this audio content, which is not exactly easy to hear right now because it's mostly just static. It's archival. It's yes. Okay. okay, we're in the second floor of the Masonic Temple Hall in Jackson. So, um, and if we have, in, at least for now, if we have multiple uh, digital objects um, that have. Uh, it, we, if the first one is embeddable, we will present the embedded viewer. Um, otherwise, we will just present links here below. Uh, also, um, we can do the same with video content. So, So this is an example of uh, an embedded viewer for video content. And natural language and stuff like the plague at Xerox, because we couldn't figure out how to do it in such a way that it wouldn't constantly violate people's expectations. So um, the fact that we were able to deliver this uh, really al allows us to leverage a lot of existing infrastructure here at Stanford. Uh, we do realize that not all institutions have something like Sewell Embed. And so one of the things that I think is also important to note is that the viewer implementation, uh, the, you can build your own implementation for a viewer. Uh, Jesse, do you want to talk a little bit about the sort of the, the, the demo work that you did or the prototyping work you did um, in terms of writing the documentation for that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if anybody you know, is interested in providing their, their own viewer implementation, um, we have provided a, a page on the Arclight wiki, which is available at, at, at our GitHub, uh, on our GitHub repository. Um, and uh, effectively, um, the implementation that we ship uh, is just uh, implemented and configured in the same way that anybody would implement and configure their own custom viewer. So um, ours, ours is completely abstracted and, and done um, just as a viewer, as if you were to create your own. Um, and it's very simple. Um, yeah, Mark's pulling up the, uh, the, the documentation um, here. So for example, one of the really simple uh, implementations that I did just to prove that um, as an application maintainer, I am capable of providing my own viewer. Um, I wrote a simple little uh, PDF JS viewer that can go out and fetch um, a PDF and view and, and display it right on the screen if you have it. Um, there's there's things built into this already to say like um, my thing is an embeddable viewer if it matches these URL uh, regular expressions or exclude these URL regular expressions. So there's some intelligence built in uh, for this thing is something that I feel like I should be able to pull in a viewer for versus these are things that I don't know how to deal with. So just render links to the user to an outside resource. Um, so there's some intelligence built in there. Um, and we're definitely uh, looking for kind of feedback on this. And as, as folks are implementing this, um, trying to understand more use cases for how this could be a more robust feature. Great. Thanks, Jesse.
So I just have a couple of more features to demo rather quickly. Uh, so like a lot of Blacklight applications, or if you're familiar with Blacklight ap applications, one of the things that you get out of the box is the ability to bookmark. So if you, I've bookmarked this, and if I can go back to a set of search results, um, I can then bookmark some additional content. And if I go to my bookmarks, I can then see that I, I can go back and refer to these. In addition, um, to demo the request functionality that we've we've prototyped, again, this is sort of a, I think along the same lines as our digital object viewer implementation, uh, this is designed to be, uh, what we've built is really a, a proof of, only a proof of concept. Um, we don't really expect that anybody will use this specific implementation. It's more a demonstration that we can do this. So with this collection, um, uh, currently, requests are pre presume that you uh, that there needs to be a component a, a container associated with a, a particular component. So in here, um, you what you see in the inventory are a series of request buttons. And if I were to open up a specific uh, com uh, component in this view, you would also see this request link over here. So if I were to, to click this request link. One of the things, our uh, default uh, implementation or our prototype implementation uh, just creates, we've created a Google form and this allows us to sort of basically precede some data into the form. So it provides a link to that component in, in the ArcLight application, collection title, collection creator, uh, the collection ID, and uh, component title and container information. And then you can have the user, for example, enter in visit date or any other uh, any other information. So obviously this is not necessarily a robust implementation and not a demonstration of what we could do with requests or with Aon integration, but it is sort of allows us to demonstrate that we do have the ability to pass this data to an external system. Uh, so this concludes the demo of all our features that we did during the work cycle. And thank you for joining.